Good day learners and welcome back to the final push. We're looking now at Excel and uh, we start in as usual with our November 2022 paper. So we can see what they've asked in that section <laughs> and then we take it from there. Okay, so let's have a look at this first as I go down. Here we go. So we're looking at question number four. In this case, and it'll be question number five as well. Yes, no, question six as well. Okay, so we're looking at a total of 52 marks here. And you can see as I go, and I'm going to take it worksheet by worksheet. So we need to open this workbook. So I'm just going to move this to the side. We're going to go question four internet statistics and we need to work in the sheet one worksheet okay so let's make that a little bit bigger and let's see what they need from us first they want us to rename sheet one to internet stats all right simple enough right click rename internet stats that's fine so all of this we should be familiar with merge and center cells a1 to f1 a1 f1 merge and center define a name for the data in cell e4 use the name population so e4 here we are and you can go up here to rename it you can also just right click on it and you can say define name and they want it population all right and you see now when i click on that there you can see the name has been defined okay see here uh, calculate the percentage of users for each category in column d out of the population provided in cell e4 okay so we've got column d We've got our population figure in E4 for cells F5 to F9. Display each amount with a percentage symbol. So now we already know that we're going to have to format that. And you can see the formatting at the moment is just general. Okay, so we know we're going to have to format that to percentage. All right, let's go further. Um, if you're unable to complete question 4.3, Make use of absolute cell referencing in your calculation. So if you couldn't do this, and what they're basically saying is they want you here to put in a formula that actually references to this. If you didn't do that, then you just do the absolute cell referencing. And I'll show you both so that we are clear on that. Calculate the percentage of users for each category. So we want to work out a percentage, what percentage this is from that. That is, that's basically what they want. Okay. So I can either go and say, all right, equals, um, what is it? E5. And I can say, divide that by E4. Do you see it comes up with the word population? Because that's the name of the cell. Now, if I don't want that, I can like literally go and type in E4. You see, it still highlights that. Hit enter. And then what do I have to do? I've got to format this as percentage. Okay. I can then also just go and take those zeros away and leave it like that. Now I can also go in here and I can say, okay, well, I wanted to refer to E4 every time, because remember, if I do this, it's not going to like, like that is, that is not right. Okay. So, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my absolute cell referencing. Oops. Answer remains the same. And now I can do the autofill. And you see how that's changed, right? And it references the same cell, E4, every time. If you have left it as E5 divided by population, Again, that will also work and that will be fine. So I'm just showing you both methods 
of doing that. Use conditional formatting in cells E13. So here we go. E13 to E25. Well, E24 there. To fill the top three social platforms based on percentages with any color of your choice. So we're going to go to conditional formatting. Here we have it. Home tab. Conditional formatting. And what are they looking for? Let's go top or bottom. And we're looking at the top three. Okay, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm going to go to top and bottom rules. And I'm going to say top 10 items. All right. Now, they only want the top three. So I'm just going to scroll through here until I get to the top three items. And they said um, with a col any color of your choice. So that's fine. There's my top three. And then the last one that they wanted, insert a field at the bottom right of the footer to automatically display the current page number. All right, so let's go there. Um, for this, we're going to change our view over here so we can actually see the header and footer. And you can see there's your header section. There's your footer section. Let's see again. Insert a field in the bottom right footer. Okay, so over there. Uh, to automatically display the current page number. So I'm just going to click in there. I'm going to go up here, head and footer elements, and I'm going to go page number. Right? Then I can go out of that, back to my normal view, and only when I go into that view will I see my page number. Okay. And that's everything for that particular worksheet. And they wanted me to go to the SA users worksheet. Um, they want us to sort the data in cells A4 to C16. We've got all that highlighted. We're going to go to sort and filter, custom sort. They want us to sort it based on the percentage. And they want it descending, so from largest to smallest. Leave the sort on, that should be fine. And we're going to click OK. So I just want to show you this quickly. Remember, this, this is two marks. And you're getting your two marks because of sorting it according to percentage, right? With the descending. So, yeah. Sorting it is one, descending is another one. Done. Format the cell range C4 to C16. OK, again. So that the numbers display with a percentage symbol. For example, 25.50 will display as 25.50%. All right. That seems simple enough. All right. So when I highlight this and I right click, and go to format cells and I change this to percentage. You see what that number looks like? Like it's 9,320%. Okay. If I go up here and I change that to percent, it does the same thing. Okay. Convert that back. If I use percentage over here, it does exactly the same thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these because now I've looked at the other options. They don't work. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to format cells. And then in here, I'm going to go to custom. Now, as I scroll through, oh, I see there's an option, but it's still giving me that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, for, a backslash after the zero. And can you see what it does? There we go. So it's going to give me that 93% because let me see what they wanted in the question paper again. Um, oh, they want the two decimal places. Okay, so I'm going to go two decimal places, go with the backslash, and there we go. Click OK, and there we've got that sorted. All right, the next thing they want me to do is to create a 3D pie chart consisting of the top five most used social media platforms. So we know that it's one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so they want us to create that chart. And where am I going to go to? I'm going to go insert. I'm always checking the question paper here. 3D pie chart. So there's my 3D pie chart. 
and they want me to use data callouts. So please remember, I've got all these options over here. My data labels, they have got data callout. And they say use data callouts with a black fill and white text. Okay, so let's see. They want a black full and text white. There we go. All right, then move the chart to its own new sheet. So we're going to go cut. We're going to call this chart one. And I'm just going to paste that anywhere. There we go. That's done. And then they tell us to look at figure two on the next page for an example of what the completed chart should look like. And that's what they want. So we need to make one or two changes. And we need to change our background. Um, let's see what we can do. We're going to change our full. What was this like? Sort of a dark gray. Maybe a little darker than that. And we've got our data callouts. And then they just wanted the title changed to percentage of South African users aged 16 to 64. And we want that text in white. Cool. And there we go. So now we are in question number five. As I said, we have this open. We are looking at the different worksheets and we can see there's words coming up like the pivot, which means we're going to be dealing with pivot tables, charts and everything else in between. So let's look at our first worksheet. They want us to ensure that row one remains visible. Don't display grid lines and apply a filter. So let's have a look at that. Here we are in the worksheet. There's internet users. And they want me to make sure that the first row, so this one over here, that when I scroll down, it remains in place. Now, if it's just that, I can just go up to view, I can go to freeze panes, freeze top row, and that's that. But just for that added bit of info, if I wanted to freeze the top two or top three rows, um, I need to select, always select one more. And then when I go freeze panes, I have to first unfreeze that and then freeze panes and just say freeze panes. Do you see it selects only the three? So if you need to freeze five rows, you're going to select six rows and then do the freeze panes. OK, let's undo that. All right. So we've got the top row. That's done. Do not display the grid lines in your worksheet. So again, in our view tab over here, grid lines, we take that tick out and there we are now not displaying the grid lines. Then they want us to apply a filter. So let's have a look. Sort and filter. What sort of filter do they want us to apply? They say, let me just show you here, using the following criteria, entity must be South Africa. So let's go and do that. Entity must be and I can take the tick out and I can just type in here South Africa take the others out and the year must be 2015 2016 and 2017 only so I'm going to go down here make sure that only 2015 16 and 17 are selected and click OK right so that's sorted out and that's four marks quick and easy now, the next one, this is my pivot table, one, two, three, four, five marks. Okay, so they say create a pivot table and a pivot chart of a clustered column type. Now, fortunately, they give you the picture and they'll always show you this so that you know what it should end up looking like. And they want us to use a cell range from the data worksheet and place the chart below the pivot table. So let's go and create the pivot table. This is the data I'm going to be using. 
and I'm going to go pivot. And yeah, I'm just going to go insert, pivot table, and they've given me a range. So I'm going to use from table range. So where am I going? I'm going to just make sure you've clicked in there. Um, what did they say? From the data worksheet, that is the range. So you can just type in the range or you can, you know, go here and just run all the way through because it's, it's massive. Okay, so I'm just going through that. And then we have everything we need in terms of our data to now create our pivot table and then we can format that. Okay, so there we have it. The location is going to be in the pivot worksheet, cell A1. We're going to click OK. And there we have now all our data that's been pulled through. So what do they want? They want the countries, years, and our values. So we know over there we want to use averages. Okay. Do we have the countries? Yes, it was under entity. So we put a tick in that. We want the year. We put a tick in that and we want the percentage of individuals using the internet. All right. Now on entity, we want to filter that. So which countries did they want? They wanted Eswatini. So let's go there. Put a tick in Eswatini. Then they wanted Namibia. And let's get Namibia. Then I think it's South Africa and Zimbabwe. South Africa and Zimbabwe. Click OK. So there we go. Now it's 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 already reduced in terms of size. OK. Now we want to go to the year. Do we want to filter that? Yes. What have they said? They want the years 2015, 16, and 17. So again, we go to year. We're taking that tick out and we're going 2015, 2016, 2017. Click OK. Right. So that is done. Um, and then this one we're going to... Now we're going to leave it as is for now. What we now need to do, because I can only see the sum of year and some of the percentages. It's not what we want because we can see it over here. And I'm going to take sum of year out because I don't need that. However, I need my year in as one of these rows. Okay. I'm going to remove that. So now I've got my countries, I've got the years, I've got the percentage. But have a look at this. Is that what it looks like? No. Okay. So we need to still do a little bit of work. Now, this is displaying as rows. So I'm going to take year and I'm going to move here over to uh, columns. And now you can see I have my countries and I've got my years. Okay, I'm getting there. <laughs> now, over here with my sum, I'm going to go to value field settings. And what did they want? They wanted the average. Average, there, all of that is fine. And I'm just going to um, format this so that it just displays what did they want? One decimal point. That's okay. I can just adjust this over here. Adjust that as well. Okay, so now what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change this name because you can see uh, what the name looked like over there average row tables. So I'm just going to click here. I'm going to go down to value field settings and just change that to average and click OK. Right. So now we can see everything seems to be in place. Now, if we want to take this and create a, a chart, we're just going to highlight that. We're going to go to insert and there we have under charts, pivot chart. And the only option we have is pivot chart. Now, they did say they wanted a clustered column. So I'm just going to select that. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. My pivot chart has been created. It is under my pivot table. And I've got my marks. 
And we're now going to go into question number six. So they say to us here that we need to open and work only in the folder question six. That's fine. Open the workbook upon reading it. Okay, so they already give us a few <laughs> warnings. Um, and they just saying, please, if you see this, please click enable content. And that's fine. They want us to go to the SAI SPS worksheet. We're in there. And they want us to create a database code for each service provider. The code must be created. And we can already see that this is concatenate. Um, what do they want? The code must be uppercase. Must contain the first three letters of the company name. So there we go. And a random number. So now, yo, we've got concatenate with um, formulas inside of that as well. So, okay. Um, and we might not even need concatenate, actually. So, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Database code. I just want to keep this open. So uppercase, the code must be all uppercase. I'm going to leave that for last because I mean, with uppercase, we're just going to go equals upper and it's going to uppercase whatever we have. Okay. So, okay, maybe we'll just leave it like that. Then from there, what do they want? They want, it must contain the first three letters of the company name. So there's the company name, which now means I'm going to do what? I'm going to go left of which cell? The company name. How many characters do I want? Let me just check. Oh, yes. They said the first three letters. Okay. So that's done. Right? Do they only want that? No. They wanted a random number also between one and nine. How do we do that? What is our formula? Our formula is rand between, and it's going to be one and nine. And I'm going to close my bracket. But now immediately I notice I have a problem because I haven't put anything in here. I need to put my and symbol. So that basically what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever the answer is here and I'm adding it to this. Whatever this is going to be, it's going to put it in uppercase. So I just need to make sure I'm closing all my brackets as well. So that's all fine. And I hit enter and there we go. And when I look over here, <laughs> it's the same. Okay. So done. And then obviously I can just pull that down and you can see there. It does all of that for me. There's act seven. Okay, so that's all fine. Now, they want me to do a few functions here. Let me see. Oh, yes, on this worksheet. The highest fiber cost in cell H2. The highest fiber cost in, sorry, cell H52. Whoa. Okay, so the highest cost, what is that going to be? I can use... One of two things, I can go equals max, or I can go large one, but I mean, in this case, they're just asking for the highest. So I'm just gonna go equals max, and the highest fiber cost, hit enter, done, All right? Next one, what is it, uh, the lowest? Okay, so equals min, and again, these are just basics. And then the number of providers charging more than a thousand rand for fiber. Okay. Again, number of providers charging more than a thousand rand for fiber. And they want that over here in cell H54. So, number of providers. What are they saying to us? They're saying to us that we need to count, right? But do we have a criteria? Yes. So is it a normal count? No. What's it going to be? Count if. So I'm going to count if, and what is my range going to be? The fiber. What is the criteria? If it is those that charge 
more than 1000 rand. Okay, how many do we have? Let's see if there's anyone that's charging more than 1000 rand. No. But we've done what they asked us to do. So let's just go and change that. Let's, just to make sure everything is working, I'm going to make that 800. I'm going to hit enter. Ah, and then we've got four. Now obviously, I can just change that number format. Make sure that that is displaying as four. And there we go. Done. All right. Let's see what else. Okay, that's it for that worksheet. So I can close that and go to every host. Okay, so now we are in the AfriHost worksheet, and I'm going to jump past this quickly because that's a five mark question. I'm just going to go to the simple one, 6.4, unlock cells, H4 to H8. So when the sheet is protected, only those cells can be edited. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to these cells, and it's these H4 to H8. So I'm going to highlight that going to go up to review, I'm going to go to allow edit ranges. Okay, and I've done this already, but I'm just going to do it again. So I'm going to click on new. You can give it a name if you want to, or you can just leave it like that. Um, you can see the range is that over there. You can give it a password if you want to. And then I have people edit it, you don't have to, you can leave it as is and click OK. Then you click protect sheet. Now I'm going to put in a password just to show you how this works. And what's going to happen now is like I can click on these things, but I can't edit anything. However, this section I can, right? Because that's what they wanted me to do. So please remember, you just want to, let me just take this out. <laughs> you just want to make sure you highlight your cells first review, um, allow edit ranges, I'll have to unprotect this sheet now, um, allow edit ranges, new, fill that in, click OK, and then protect sheet on that. Okay, then you'll be fine with that. Right, let's look at the next one, the five mark one. So Afrios launched a structured paper mix system for its mobile users. If Okay, there's our first clue. We're dealing with we're dealing with an if statement, and it's most likely going to be a nested if. If a user has used 200 megs over or less over four weeks, they pay a certain amount. If they've used 500 megs, then they pay 35 cents per meg. Calculate in column H. So let's go here. That's this one over here. Um, the cost for a user per month based on the pricing strategy given in columns J and K. Okay, right. So we are dealing with a nested if now, because what are we saying? If a user used 200 megs over four weeks. So what is the criteria? 200 megs or less over the four weeks. This is what they're going to pay. If they've used up to 500 megs, then they pay 35 cents. Okay, so let's go and type all of this <laughs> out. I know it's going to be a long story, but let's, yeah, let's just get it done. So I'm going to go equals if, and the first thing I'm now going to say, because remember, these are my totals. So I know over the four weeks, these are my total. So if whatever is in the cell is less than or equal to 200, what must now take place? What must now take place? Whatever that is must be multiplied by this. Remember, this is 200 or less. So now we're going to say that cell, and we're going to say it has to be multiplied by whatever is in that cell. Now we can do our absolute cell referencing as well, because then we know that's sorted. So do you see that this is the first section now? If whatever is in the cell is less than or equal to 200, then they've got to take that amount and multiply that by 20 cents per meg. 
What's our next one? We start again. If whatever is in G4, what's the next criteria? Less than or equal to 500 megs. What must happen? G4 must be multiplied by what? By 35 cents. And again, we can go F4 there as well. Finish that off. The next one. Because you see, I've got one, two, three, and then the last one. So it's going to be if, 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 and then whatever's left. So again, if, and I'm going to open my bracket, whatever is in G4 is now less than or equal to 1,000. Whoops. 1,000. What must take place? G4 must be multiplied by 50 cents. And we're going to go F4 with that as well. Sorry, yeah, I just picked up. It's got to be K3. Okay, there we go. And then for the last one, am I going to use an if? No, because now we've got if, if, if. And if all else fails, then we are taking that and we're going to multiply that by whatever is in that cell. Now, close bracket, close bracket close bracket. And there's my answer. Now, because I've used absolute cell referencing, I've got everything sorted. All right, now we're going to the megabits per second worksheet. And yeah, they're definitely going to test you. So they want us to correct the error in column I. And what is the error? equals average C2 to I2. No, 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 no. It's C2 to G2. Into that. But I bring that all the way down. And that's done. So they said correct the error in column I that causes the function to not calculate correctly. We've done that in cell C8. Okay. 6.6 uh, .6, create a drop down list in cell C8. Eight. And remember how we do a drop down list. We're going to go to data, data validation, data validation, and list. So, what's our source? What do they say? Displaying the values from the cell range B2 to B6. Done. All in. Click OK. And there I have my list. Now, what they want to see, do here with the VLOOKUP essentially is, and we know, to take info that we have in one range, match it up to another one, and then take the relevant info that we need. Okay? Now, remember, we have these um, that we've pulled from here to create a drop-down list. And basically, what they want us to do is to put in formulas here so that when I change these figures, it will change the corresponding cost lined up with these figures. Okay, so let's go and start formulas, insert function, VLOOKUP, and I need to look at my lookup value. What am I looking up? The main thing that I'm going to be changing is whatever's in the cell. Okay, my table array is going to be this whole area here, because it wants to, or I want it to match up with this, I wanted to look at the ISP and give me the relevant info over here. Then right at the end, I know that's going to be false. And the reason why I'm skipping the column index number is because I'm going to need a formula because this is fairly intricate. And I'm going to be using a formula called match. Now, what do I need to match up? What do I need to match up? I need to match up whatever is in the cell. Yeah. I need to match up this name with what? With that ISP name. So I'm going to just put in my semicolon. I'm then going to highlight all those names over there, that range, so that, okay, that is what we want to do. And then I'm going to put in a semicolon and zero because what I wanted to do is pull the figures um, over here. Right. 
Then I'm going to click OK. And now it says not applicable, but when I change the figures over there, you can see what happens. Now, obviously, I need to go in and I need to make sure absolute referencing is there. Um, because otherwise, if I do this, I'm going to get problems. Okay, so please remember that get the first one right, get the absolute cell referencing correct, and then you should be good to go. So this was from 2022. And they threw in that match formula. So just watch out for that one. And really, the only thing left was to create a macro that will hide rows one to six. We're still in here. Okay, row one, two, three, four, five, and six. And they say create a macro that will hide rows one to six. You may choose only one of the options. And there you can see option one is to assign a shortcut key. Or create a button titled hide rows and attach the macro to the button so that it runs when clicked. Okay, so let's go see if we can do both. Let's go with hide rows first. And if we're going to do the button, they want us to place it over here. Right, so we're going to go up to developer. We can go up to macros and we can see at this point we have no macros. Okay, so we're going to then record a macro. There they ask us, what do you want the name to be? Um, and we're going to just, I'm just going to say hi, Rose. We can have a shortcut key and it's control and R. We want it in this workbook. And I'm just going to say, hi, it's Rose. Okay, let's just put an underscore there. Hi, the rows. Click OK. So now what's going to happen is I'm recording this. And I'm saying, hi, the rows. Stop recording my macro. All right, so now all we're going to do once we've recorded that is we're just going to go up to macros. There you can see it. Run and the macro works. Okay, now let's go and add a button. Just going to create a shape. Let's say I want it to look like that. Maybe something like that. And let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm going to assign the macro. That's the macro I'm going to assign to it. I'm going to click OK. Uh, maybe I want some text there as well. And I'm going to call it hide rows. Put that text. OK, it already did that. <laughs> just going to take that text and I'm just going to put that in the center. We make it a little bit big. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to make that all maybe 15, maybe bold, maybe change it to black, whatever the case is. Um, but you can see the minute I move my, move my mouse pointer over that, it does what it needs to. And what they wanted in 2023 The November final. Let's see. Let's see. So it's good just to make sure that we've covered everything. And let's go and have a look at this. So with spreadsheets, row height, okay, merge and center, set row so they remain in place. We did that. Correct the issue with. Yeah, something not displaying properly, that's fine. And the last one here, apply a table style. So let's just go into applying a table style. And we know we've done that. 
me just close this particular one. So they wanted me to apply table style to A2 to J167. And again, table design, and I can apply um, they wanted. Okay, they give me a specific one now. The table style light blue. Table style light 16. Okay, light 13. Light 20. Light 16. There we go. Okay, so that's applying our table style. And they wanted us to go into the Teams workshop. What did they say? A sort. Okay, we know how to sort. Use an Excel to remove all duplicate items in column A. So we're going to select the entire column. And what we're going to do is we're going to go up to Data. And we're going to go to Remove Duplicates. There they say to delete duplicate values, select one or more columns. Have we done that? Yes. And we to click OK. And there are 149 unique values remain. Right. Calculate in cell C2 using the appropriate function, the number of teams. So we're dealing with a count. Um, it'll probably be count A because it's words. Um, we've done creating a chart. Chart, fault, ensure the title of the chart. Okay, that's fine. We've done those things already. Um, maybe I should do this one. Okay, 5.9, and that is in the chart worksheet. B3 to 6, and they want us to insert a 2D pie chart. Right, we're going to use this as the example. Right, so let's get the chart nice and big, put it next to that. And the first thing I see here is that the chart title is different. So it should be they wanted number of vehicles per category. All right, is that done? That is done. That's fine. What do I see here? Data call outs. Let's see what we can do there. Let's just check with a question. Okay. So use the chart filter to hide quads from the chart. So we want to check in with our filter over here. We don't want quads. So we're going to take that out and apply that. And that's fine. Okay. Ensure the chart title reads. Okay. We've got the chart title. Data labels for the sections should appear. So data labels should appear, what do they say? Outside of each section. So there we go. Data labels must have a black background. So the full must be black. Well, I'm filling the wrong thing here. That full must be black. Okay, that's fine. And the text must be white. All right. Can you see that we are? We are getting there. Okay. Next one. They want the. They want us to separate the bikes section slightly from the rest of the table. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. So they want us to do that. And what we are going to do there. just going to click on that and we're going to explode that a little bit. They don't say what the percentage should be, but they just want us to take that out a little bit. See, happy with that. And then they want us to use an image for the background. So chart design, I can even just do that. And full and full with a picture. And the pitch is going to be from a file. And then I just have to go and find it. <laughs> 2023, question five. There we go. 
And I just want to change that to white. And there we are, folks. There's our chart. Everything done. Finished. Question number six then asks us to go into the accounts worksheet of the next file. And they want us to look at things like determine the full fees, create a unique racer tag number. Okay, so this is concatenate here. I know the other one I thought was concatenate, but this one um, is going to be our concatenate. But you see, it follows the same thing, right? What do we want to do? We want to have a hash symbol. We want to have the racer number followed by a random number between that. We then have a few other formulas, quite a few functions there to finish everything off. So let's go and do those quickly. Now, again, if you don't want to use, you know, concatenate to do these things, you don't have to. Um, what you can do is just to use the and symbol. And so I'm going to show you two ways. So with this one, remember what they said, they want the hash symbol and whatever the racer number is and a random number between one and 500. Now I can do the same if I go concatenate and I say the hash. Um, whatever's in a three, well, a four in this case, and then the rand between one and five hundred. Okay, so it doesn't matter which way you do it, um, as long as you get that correct. Let's look at 6.3, which says, if a racer is racing to raise money for charity, this is indicated by the letter Y for yes and N for no. That is in column I. Okay. Determine in column J... 15% of the full fee payable if the racer is supporting a charity. Okay, let's go and look at this. Now, already, already, there's my first clue. If. So now I'm dealing with an if statement. That much I know. Right. Formula, insert function. If. Now. What am I going to be doing with this? They say, determining column J, 15% of the full fee payable if a racer is supporting charity. So now, how do I know? No or yes. So what must happen? We need to look into that cell and we need to say if whatever in that cell is equal to Y. Right? If it's equal to Y, does it have a Y in it? What must happen if it displays Y? What did they say? They want 15% of what? 15% of the full fee payable. Okay. So where's our full fee payable? There we go. So I'm going to click on that. And what do they say? They want 15% of that. So times 15%. And else the charity donation remains at zero. Okay, click OK, and it remains at zero, but let's just go all the way down here. There we go. 15%, 15% is it on a Y? Yes, 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 yes. Done. Um, let's see. Let's go through some more. Next one was just normal. That's fine. Um, let's go to this one. There's a some ifs in cell N10. Let's have a look. N10 over here. 
Okay, so let's look at the question. That was 6.8. 6.8 says, calculate and sell N10 by means of a function, the total amount of money donated by all car drivers. Format the cell as currency with the euro symbol. Okay, so now what we are going to do is they want us to look at the total charity donations from all cars. This is the fee payable. These are the charity donations. Now, I can use some if, but it's not going to give me, allow me to do everything I need to do. Why? Because even though I want to add up all of this, I've got two criteria. It's got to be those that are from the category of car and those who have indicated yes to donating. Okay, so for this reason, I'm going to use some ifs. What is it I want to add up? It's these donations. And what two criteria am I looking at? Well, the first one comes from the cars here in column D. So I'm going to select the first criteria range and then put in car. And then the second one comes from the supporting charity. Those who are supporting charity and that criteria is Y or yes. Click OK and there we are done. Beautiful. Okay, let's go further. This is 2023. We've done VLOOKUPS, uh, pivot table again, another macro, we've already done that, and that's it for 2023. And then I just want to have a look at 2024, because then that will bring our track to an end um, for Excel. So I just want to have a look, Excel. It's like two questions. Okay, so in 2024, in the prelims, they wanted us to resize the columns, cell borders, shading, um, nothing out of the ordinary there, everything fairly simple, sorting data, freezing panes. We've done all of this now, filtering the charts, um, working out discount. Ah, here we go. Here's one. Okay, so a pivot table, all of that. I only see one thing that I think we need to um, touch on, and that's going to be from question number five. So let's go to question five. Can open up transactions. And let's see what they wanted to know from us. So they said, create an entry for order ID in D3. Oh, sorry, wrong worksheet. <laughs> worksheet fit. Okay. Create an order ID for um, D3. And they say they want the day value from the date in column A. So I'm going to go to column A. There we can see they want the hour value from the time in column B. They then want a hyphen and the order number in column C. Yo, okay. And there you can see that must be the final result. There's an example of what they want. They want the day value, so five. They want the hour value, 12 hyphen and four okay so let's go and do this what are we going to start with so what we are going to do now is the following we've got and they're basically telling us what formulas to use so from our time we're going to go equals i'm just going to take it step by step a three okay i can delete that i can even just type in click on a three there and when I hit enter, you can see it's giving me the day. If I have to use month, you can see what it's going to give me. Okay. 
So that's the first thing. And this is where the building blocks come in, guys. So I'm going to use that. Then the next one is they wanted the hour. So now inside this formula, I'm going to go and, and I'm going to say hour from which cell? This one. I'm going to close it. Hit enter. Right. So I've got my day and I've got my hour. What else did they want? They wanted a hyphen. So I'm going to give them a hyphen. And then they wanted whatever was in cell C3, the order number. Enter. And there is my order ID. Right. I think that was really the only thing that I saw there. Um, yeah, 5.4. Let's, while I'm, while I'm here, let's just, let's look at this one. Apply data validation to cell E3 so that all the menu items from K3, so that was a drop down list. Guys, we know this. We know this. We know this. We know this. K3 to K22. Click OK. There we go. Avocado smoothie. Beautiful. It is done. Okay. And everything else that we that I've seen in 2024, the prelim is really more or less the same as we've seen in the finals. Um, and that's been covered in finals that I showed you in 2022 and 2023. So yes, that's a wrap for Excel.